thought about the foods you eat, or exactly what's in the foods, like fruits, vegetables, canned goods. With the presence of genetically modified organisms, or GMF, genetically modified foods, you start to question what exactly you're eating. GMO, which stands for Genetically Modified Organism, or GMF, Genetically Modified Foods, are produced from organisms that have had alterations to their DNA with genetic engineering. Take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Jeffrey Smith has risen to be a huge spokesman for those who are against GMO. Many see him as the inspiring educator of the negative effects of GMO. One of his most popular books has now turned into a documentary, which was that previous clip. Through his film, he discusses what seeds and crop are genetically modified and collaborates with many doctors to prove the serious health effects that can occur from eating GMF. Tom Philpott conducted a study to see what the negative side effects were of GM soy and corn. The study was to feed rats the GM soy. Scientists found that the rats exposed to even the smallest amounts of the soy developed memory tumors and severe liver and kidney damage in as early as four months. Now that we see what GMOs are and the adverse health effects of what GMOs can do to our bodies through testing, let's see what consumers have to say about genetically modified organisms. Excuse me, ma'am, can I ask you a question? Sure. I noticed that you're reading the labels really carefully on the products that you're looking at. Why are you doing that? Um, well, I was uh, diagnosed a few years ago with an autoimmune disease, mm -hmm. and um, I've done the conventional um, medicine treatments and still have the disease. So I sought out uh, a nutritional therapist and a few months ago, probably about five months ago, she uh, suggested that I uh, stop eating any GMO. And so she helped me with that and researched. And so now I look for the non-GMO project uh, verified products. Now, since you've seen better results with the removal of GMO from your diet, what are your opinions about genetically modified organisms? Um, I, I feel like, um, we have the right to, to know what's in our food and what we're consuming. I, I really um, support uh, GMO uh, labeling um, and having so that we know what's in our food. Hi, I'm Melissa George and I'm a third year biomedical engineering student at the University of Cincinnati. How I feel about GMOs is that I don't really care whether or not companies are making GMOs. I really just want to know whether the product that I'm getting from them has GMOs inside of it. Here in the U.S., there's a lot of GMOs being made for ease of use, to keep bugs from being on the food, to make them look bigger, to make them look better, without any nutritional value added to it. So, short story, I don't really care if companies are creating GMOs. I just want to know if their product has it in there. I think that we should be able to have the choice of whether or not we eat the GMOs and not just have them forced upon us. Because I think that if we're given the choice and people choose not to eat GMOs, that should say something to the industry, as opposed to having them just give us whatever they want, which I think has some different ethical implications to them. Many consumers are frustrated because many products in the stores are GMO. With the consumers that are choosing non-GMO labeled products, choices are limited and they're running into a financial dilemma. I decided to ask a scientist about genetically modified organisms. Many who are pro-GMO say that if you're against GMO, you're against science. Let's see what a microbiologist has to say about the subject. My name is Eunice Orgis and I am a microbiologist at the US EPA. I've been there for 10-12 years now. I do molecular microbiology. I work with parasites and viruses mm -hmm. and basically looking at organisms that affect our intestines and that cause gastrointestinal illness. Recombination is something that happens almost in anything that we look at nowadays with um, microorganisms and with um, different types of plants. It's something that happens naturally. But um, I did start noticing um, those type, uh, doing more research about those things, especially when my son was um, diagnosed with an intestinal illness. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't figure out exactly what was wrong with him, but he'd have severe pain. And he was so young, and I was thinking, why is it that a young child like this would be undergoing such pain and such agony from, you know? And so we, I started doing some research, and um, <clears throat> food items, I could tell, was changing the way he was having pain. And he, some, of it, some of the food items would cause more pain than others. And so I... Um, that's when I really started looking into GMOs and to see if that might be a yeah. reason. I think we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. 
um, we're playing with fire, and so we need to make sure that um, there aren't any consequences. Unfortunately, many studies are limited in finance, and so they're not able to do an extensive study of the clinical effects of different um, modified organisms. And so we need to actually look at anything that's genetically modified and do a more further study of it. <clears throat> Sometimes there is an industrial push to try to get uh, product out in the mm -hmm. market so that they, they've done a lot of research, the, mar the company has spent a lot of money um, producing the product and then they just want to start getting their investments worth. And so um, I can understand the reasoning for getting the product out there and doing minimal clinical research. However, extended clinical research I think will help understand better the consequences, um, possible side effects of these type of things. I think that um, the extended aspects haven't been looked at. So for things like that I was discussing earlier with you about like corn, mm -hmm. you know, BT corn and um, the aspects of what corn can do. Mm -hmm. I followed up with a lot of research and it's true that um, even though um, not everyone might be susceptible to the BT corn, it's possible that um, there can be perforations in your intestine. The intactness of our intestine is affected and compromised by um, BT corn and several papers have shown that. And so in those regards, I feel that um, it can be very dangerous. We can end up developing allergies to things that we've never developed allergies to. We have such a high quantity of corn in our diet mm -hmm. that it's something that we need to consider. Um, I think further st there should be more studies done on these type of things. With personal experience being diagnosed with a long list of food allergies, I'm not only against what Monsanto has to offer with GMO, but with personal experience and scientific research and statistical research, I can definitely see the negative health effects. Right now, we are currently human lab rats. Shouldn't we have the choice of what we want to eat? Shouldn't we have the right to know?